Hey guys, so what about this Apple intelligence thing? Is it the doom of the world? Is it a huge security threat as Elon Musk would suggest? Elon Musk went on X and he started ranting about how uh, Apple intelligence was too much of a security risk because they're hooked up to ChatGPT. Um, and so if they integrated ChatGPT within the operating system, within iOS and iPadOS, uh, Elon Musk would not allow the phones to be uh, brought into any of his companies. So, is this a real threat? Is it something to be concerned about? So, like so many other people on the YouTubes and other social media platforms, even though I am not an AI expert, I do have a very strong opinion about everything related to AI. You know, look, I got white hair, white whiskers, I got a bald head, means I'm older means I should know something, right? Apple claims that the communication between ChatGPT and iOS is going to be uh, protected via their hardware, their chip technology. So basically, ChatGPT will be processing uh, your request and uh, anonymously. So it won't know who you are and so on and so forth. Now, this may, be the, this may be the case. I don't see why not. Now, I have, a, I have a bias in that I think that Apple has this tendency to want to protect an anonymity of its users, but it's a bias, right? It's, it's, it, it's, not, it's only founded in their past behaviors. I don't know what they would do today. Yes, you could see how Apple's operating system could obfuscate the communications between you and the ChatGPT, so ChatGPT wouldn't know who you are. Problem is, in the uh, request that you do send to ChatGPT, it could, con it could contain some keywords that would tell ChatGPT a lot of things. So, for example, if you were working at Tesla, right, and you said, ah, oh, well, and you ask a bunch of questions related to, you know, maybe you're putting together a presentation, an internal presentation for Tesla. And you got some keywords, Tesla and so on and so forth. So this would be, you'd be sharing information with GPT, even though the bridge of communication between the device and GPT would be obfuscated. Embedded in the content would be information that ChatGPT can then log. Now, Elon, I believe, has a beef with uh, OpenAI. He funded it to a certain extent or maybe entirely, I don't know, initially. So I think he's got a beef with them with regards to how they proceeded with uh, their business model. So that's a, f a part of it. So should you be concerned about Apple intelligence? I don't know. Keep your eyebrow cocked on that. You know, take, you know, don't go in there blindly. That said, generally speaking, as I advise people, have been for many, many years now, you have to assume anything that you put on the web any emails you send, any text you send, in this situation, any information that you send to Apple Intelligence, which is ChatGPT, assume that it's out there, right? Assume that it's out there. That's the assumption you have to make. Assume that everything is out there. If I have any information that I feel is proprietary or sensitive, I uh, stick it into uh, encoded files, password protected, send it. And then I send the password to people through some other means of communication. I do this as a matter of um, standard practice on my end. So whatever you do, always assume that all communication online is being monitored. You do that, you'll be in a good position. Another interesting point that was brought up in the presentation, Apple's presentation, I just saw some clips. They talked about how they warn you that the responses said, sent back to you by the AI may not be reliable. This, of course, is AI hallucination. AI hallucination is a thing. That's a term that's used in industry, the hallucination, the AI hallucination, meaning AI, and if you used AI to any extent, you see that it will go off on these tangents, which will make no sense. And so you have to have... Uh, an eye for that. You have to catch that. You cannot rely 100% on AI because, well, AI really, that term, artificial intelligence, to me, is just a marketing term that represents processes that are far from being intelligence. AI, 
uh, does not think. It does not have a capacity for logic. Thus, it goes off on these crazy hallucinations. I was just using GPT a couple days ago, and I forget what it was exactly, but I was flabbergasted. <laughs> I was flabbergasted uh, with the response it gave me. It's like if it had any level of intellect, even like 70 IQ, it would have been able to pick up on the ridiculous uh, uh, return that it gave me, the ridiculous statement that it made you know, when I was asking a bunch of questions. Now, don't get me wrong. AI is very, very cool, very useful tool. But as I've been saying since it first came out, it is a supportive tool. It is a tool that could help speed up certain processes. It could help you refine ideas, but it ain't going to replace uh, experts anytime soon. In fact, like in my field in software development, AI cannot be effectively used to write code unless you are a coder, right? So I have a good friend of mine who's a pretty experienced coder, 15 years experience or so. And he says he uses ChatGPT all the time, and it saves him a ton of time, writing a lot of boilerplate code, et cetera, uh, helping with some, uh, writing some algorithms or something. But it still makes big mistakes, and he still has to really know what he's doing. So even if he gets a working chunk of code from the AI, he still has to know how to use that and how to place it and how to integrate it within the context of a system. So if you're watching this as a developer and you're worried about AI, don't, don't, don't worry about AI. In fact, the most important thing about AI and coding is that it will help you identify the fake coding experts online. If somebody tells you, some YouTuber or whatever tells you, oh, coding is going to, destroy, is going to be destroyed by AI, AI is going to re replace coders very soon, you know right, right, right away that these people, this individual here is not a coder. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because anybody who knows anything about professional software development knows that the coding part of coding is a small part of the process. It's the figuring out of problems, is, is the deconstruction of complexity, and then implementing tools like coding languages and frameworks and servers and so forth. That's the complex part of development. It's not the languages. The languages are just the tools, right? The carpenter... Their skill is not defined by how well they can swing a hammer or how well they can use a saw. Their skill is defined in how they build the project. The hammer and the saw and the nails and the measuring tape, these are just tools, just like Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, except for Ruby. Never use Ruby. Uh, these are just tools. So with Apple Intelligence and how it's being integrated into the operating system, which I like in principle, I like in principle, it's a window into how AI is going to impact us. I think that AI, for the most part, is not a deep technology. It's a widespread technology. It's got large horizontal application implications, not vertical, large horizontal. What do I mean by that? Well, since AI is dumb as F, IQ of less than 10, but it's really good at associations, it will be very useful on the margins for many different technologies. That's why we hear a lot about AI, because it could help with image, image editing and video editing and video creation. Like this camera uses AI to do the autofocus. Is this going to work? See, look at that. That's AI. It'll help with coding, speeding up coding, et cetera, and so on. It'll help with the driving. I have uh, a car that's self-driving, and it's based on AI. And it does a great job. Now, I cannot, I have to still pay attention. It makes mistakes. You know, I did, did a big road trip from Montreal, Canada, down to Florida. I was in Georgia and Virginia and South Carolina. And spent four, four months on the road. And uh, the AI self-driving vehicle was very, very, very cool. It made the trip easy. But if I wasn't paying attention, if I wasn't actually driving, your old humble Uncle Steph would have been killed a few times, 100%, because the AI at some point would go, la, 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 oh, let's drive off uh, into the, uh, off the cliff. It's like, no. So you have to get involved. So AI is not intelligent. It can't be counted on to do deep work, but it could help with a lot of the mundane tasks. It could help with research. In fact, I'm putting out a brand new JavaScript course, an update to my foundations course, and one of the, one of the lessons is how to use AI 
in terms of uh, using it to advance your skills, to solve certain problems in coding and so on. But you still have to know how to code. Yeah, so Apple Intelligence, that is, that's where it's there, right? It will help you, you know, if you're brainstorming ideas, it can help you with variations and paragraph work and so forth. But you still need to know what you're doing. So anyhow, uh, brings me to another point re related to all this was that uh, I was reading an article where they were talking about how these AI experts were saying that within a few years, AI will hit plateau again because they're running out of data. The key to training the AI is speed of processing, so you can iterate over the information as much as possible, as quickly as possible. That's why NVIDIA is blowing up. You need CPUs like crazy or GPUs. And uh, data. You need lots and lots of data. Without more data, the AI can't really do anything. AI cannot invent. AI can only find associations within a, its data set and rearrange it but it's not able to invent because AI has no IQ. It's, it's stupid as F. Yeah, a quick example of that. So this, is camera, this camera has AI to help me, to help autofocus on my face. Now, the AI will lose me every once in a while. And it's very, very good. It doesn't lose me often, but it will lose me every once in a while. It just loses me and I have to help it. Why? Because AI is stupid. It can't, it, sometimes it loses my face. A human will go, hey, wait, you're out of focus. And okay, we'll make a change. But the AI will find itself like it gets drunk or something and it just it loses it and then it focuses on my, on my mic or something or on the, on, on the speaker back here. And there we go. It, it can't adjust. Anyhow, enough of that. So I wouldn't be so concerned about it. I think the caveat with regard to AI security, Apple intelligence, if you're on the iOS, uh, if you're on the Apple ecosystem, use with caution and use with the expectation that everything that you put out on the web, every communication over the interwebs, and now in your phone, if, uh, if it's integrated, will, is public. So keep that in mind. So you may want to, for sensitive information, to not use uh, AI. And in fact, like I think Google and other companies have said you can't use even their own, I think Google famously, when they released their own AI, they uh, sent internal memos that they didn't want people doing uh, any sensitive work at Google. <laughs> they didn't want the AI to have that information. All right. I hope this is useful. We'll talk soon.